Way back in 1992, there were some amazing video games new to the market. I mean, Street Fighter 2 had just come out the year before, and that was tearing up the arcades. Uh, Super Mario Kart had just been released, and everyone was so into it. We don't know why, it just came from nowhere, and we bloody loved it. And of course, Mortal Kombat came out, which led to some amazing uh, claims in the, the newspapers and an awful lot of pearl clutching around the world. But something else came out that year that completely revolutionized the video game industry. And it is that game that we are basing this tutorial series on. There had never been, at least to my knowledge, a first-person shooter game before Wolfenstein 3D came out, right? Now, you could get uh, platformers, which were generally 2D, like Super Mario Brothers. You could get um, top-down, 3D-ish kind of things, but it was still really a 2D game. But to have a first-person perspective, well, it's really on that same par with Super Mario Kart, right? Where you are controlling the, uh, the character from just behind them. Well, we went to another level, and now you are looking through the eyes of your player character, which is a pretty different idea, believe it or not. So, just like we did with uh, Zelda, we had our Zero to Zelda series, so learning how to make an ARPG using the original ARPG in Zelda. Um, we did it with our Super Bogan Brothers, learning how to make a platformer with the original top-notch platformer in Super Mario Brothers. We're going to do the same thing with our first-person shooter. We're going to use Wolfenstein 3D, the original, and some might still say the best because it lets you kill robot Hitler, right? But Wolfenstein 3D is going to be our model for this particular series where we learn how to make a first-person shooter. Why Wolfenstein 3D? Well, I love going back to the source material, but also there are a lot of constraints that will be placed upon us using Wolfenstein that allow us to focus on learning Godot instead of trying to really refine some cameras and movements and things like that, lighting. We don't want to worry about that. We just want to focus on how does this work? Okay, so Wolfenstein 3D is great because it gives us the, the source material for first-person shooters, but it also gives us some good constraints, which keeps us on the path to just learning how to make a game and not getting bogged down in minor detail. But what are we doing in this lesson today? Well, we're going to start off by having a quick tour of Godot so you're familiar with where all the bits are. Um, and then we're also going to start off by creating a new project and then creating basically the world that we're going to interact with. So a floor and some walls, essentially. That's going to be our goal for this particular lesson. Now, if we're thinking Wolfenstein 3D, when we're thinking about game design and, and how we're going to design our levels, well, we mentioned the constraints, right? This was a big deal for the Wolfenstein 3D team because there was some pretty big constraints placed on them in trying to render in three dimensions. So they had to mess around with things like ray casting and, and all sorts of things. We're not going to get too bogged down in those minor details, but we're going to try and stick to this simplistic approach that they had to take because of uh, hardware constraints. We're doing it because of our own constraints, right? We're, we're not uh, expert game devs. We're still learning the way. So we want some constraints just to help us uh, focus in on what's important. So Wolfenstein 3D is the perfect, the perfect game for us to learn this through. Um, we don't need to worry about lighting. We don't need to worry about any of those sorts of things. So let's have a look at our WWSS. So when you open up Godot, if it's the first time you've opened it up, you'll get a little uh, warning come up here saying you don't have any projects yet. Um, just click cancel on that. Otherwise, you'll be looking at a screen very much like this one. Now we're gonna create a new project. So you obviously wanna go and click on the new project icon. I think we'll call this something like Wolfenstein Tutorial. Tutorial helps if I can type. We'll create a folder by that name and then we'll just click create and edit. That's all you have to do to get the project started. And when you open it up, you're gonna be brought into our 3D view, right? So straight away, we've got a few things here that we can talk about as we tour around. So I'm gonna just sort of go around the uh, the window sort of clockwise, explaining what each different thing is. If you're already f familiar with Godot, you probably um, can skip forward a little bit, but it won't take long. So let's just go through. So the first thing that we're greeted with on the top left is gonna be our nodes, right? So when we create a new scene so this one here is is a brand new scene it's currently doesn't have a name so it's just called empty 
um, we need to use nodes within our scene to control everything, right? So it's all about nodes. We have a scene and then you're going to have a root node and then subsequent child nodes therein. And that sort of creates the hierarchy for what we're doing. We'll get, we'll, you'll learn more about that as we go. But here is where we sort of choose which nodes we want. This is our canvas that we work in. So this is sort of our visual part of our game engine. A lot of what we're going to do is going to be code based, which doesn't happen in this window, but we are going to do a fair bit that requires our 3D view. So at the moment, that's what we've got selected. If we were making a 2D game, you'd want to use the 2D view, but we're also going to work with scripts. So at the top, you've got these four tabs. 3D view is the one we started on. If you click on the one next to it that says script, this is where we will create our scripts and, and edit those. And we're going to be using GD script, the Godot uh, built-in script, because it's very, very similar to Python. And I don't know about you, but I like um, trying to gain as much knowledge about different things from as many different places as I can. And if I can learn more about Python by making games in Godot, I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to use GDScript because it's similar to Python. There are other, other choices like C Sharp and things like that, but we're sticking with GDScript. Um, so you've got those views there that we've just talked about. Keep coming across. You've got these play buttons and the little clapperboard with a play. That's all for when we want to run our scenes. So generally speaking, we're going to use that main play button um, and we will get to that this lesson. Um, and then, but you can also like only run specific scenes and things like that as well. Now we've got our inspector window. So the right hand column here is all different uh, properties of the node that we would have selected. So if we've made our scene, we've got a node over here selected. It's going to show us all the properties over here. We also have different tabs. You can click on nodes and that's going to give us a list of different um, things we can do to the nodes over here. So we use this to send signals. So sort of, um, if we enter a node, like a, we could have an area node, which is about a space, when things enter that, we might want to signal our script. So we can talk about all that in more detail as we go, but that's where we find our nodes. Down the bottom here is where a lot of our animating things and, and all of that are going to show up, as well as our output, um, like our uh, serial monitor kind of thing down the bottom here. And then our file system is this bottom left-hand corner. So that's a very, very fast run around the board, um, but why don't we actually Actually get started on creating our project now. let's get started so we've had our tour let's just start making so with our little uh, basic um, view here we're going to click on 3d scene to create a new scene that is a 3d scene and that then creates this node 3d in our node view so I'm going to click on that and rename it to world because I much prefer it being called world than just randomly node 3d because there could be lots and lots of node 3ds before we're finished so we've called that one node if I control s and just save that as world.scene that is now you know saved but there's still some stuff to do so when we've got our world selected we want to click on the plus search for a mesh instance 3d and add that to our scene so when that menu comes up type in mesh it'll show up the mesh instance 3d as there'll be a few there make sure you pick the right one click on that add it to your scene and there it is there added as a child node of our world node so over here on our inspector We've got our mesh and then it says empty. Click on where it says empty and find new plane mesh and click on that. And that then gives us a floor that we can now work with. So I think it's probably a bit small though. So if we then also come down to where it says transform and then where we've got scale, let's make it like 20. Um, just because that's a nice round number, it gives us a nice field to sort of play around with. Um, you can see it there. So we've now got a floor basically that we can work with. I'm going to save that again, but this floor isn't really complete because at the moment it just looks like a floor, but there's no collision shape. So to be able to make sure that our player can stand on the floor, first our player needs a collision shape, but so does the floor itself. And there's a few ways we can do it. We can add them this way, like we've already been doing with our mesh instance, but given that we're just trying to learn the ropes, there's a much easier way of doing this. If you come up above your um, 3D scene, there's a little tab that says mesh. If you click on that, you can then click on create tri-mesh static body. And that automatically creates that collision shape for you. So now you've got a good old floor that you can't fall through. Well, a floor is all well and good, but we're also going to want walls. So we can do that in a very similar way. And essentially, after I've done the first wall, it's going to be up to you to make the rest of your walls and start having to play around with it. So we're going to make the, the walls in a very similar fashion to how we made the floor. So come back, click on our, pardon me, on our world root node, click on plus, look for that mesh instance 3D again, add one to your scene. 
There it is there. Now, this time, instead of a um, plane for our geometry, I want to use a box. So we've there, now got a box here. If I click on my transform, so I'm just going down further, transform. I want my Z to be 20, which is going to then move my box to the edge. And then I'm going to want my scale, uh, actually, uh, good. So sometimes your these numbers here will be linked because when you're doing things with scale, you might want to do it by the same percentage on each side and things like that. But for this, I don't want to do that. I just want to put 20 in for my X. Actually, I think it's going to need to be 40 for my X. There we go. And then that's created a very low wall. So how would we make our low wall bigger? Well, wider the sky, right? So let's make it say 10. Now we've got a 10 meter high wall that is 40 meters long. Beautiful. Um, so that's the first one. I'm going to leave it up to you to try and make the four other walls. Or if you're feeling really game, extend your floor and start trying to make little rooms. We are going to handle textures in a couple of lessons where we'll add a texture to the floor, textures to the walls, so it starts looking like Wolfenstein. But for now, have a bit of a play around just with these mesh shapes and things. What I recommend you do though, is once you get to this stage, save your work, create a, a copy of your file, and then just start editing the copy just in case you break something and you can't work out how to fix it, right? So let's go and have a look at our WWSS so you know exactly what you need to do. Um, is that right? No, we're going to our must may might. Whew, I'm getting old. Uh, we'll go and look at our must may might so you don't forget anything um, and then we'll deal with the rest from there. But it is up to you to make more of this. Don't just stop after you get one wall, all right? So what you must get done in this lesson to keep up is you've got to create your project and create that world scene with a floor and some walls. What you may like to do is start making some extra meshes and really flesh that world out a little bit. We're going to come back with some textures later on, but it's a good opportunity whilst the, the whole mesh stuff is fresh in your mind. Do a bunch of them. It's going to reinforce that learning for you, right? So if all you do is copy me, you don't really learn it. So now it's for you to actually expand and experiment but just make sure you save a good copy of it before you start messing around. What you might like to do is read some of the documentation on Godot for Mesh instances and try and learn a little bit about what you can do with them. All right, that's our must, may, might for this first lesson. Remember, there's going to be lots of lessons for this one. I'm breaking it down into little bits. So if you feel you're going to breeze through this, don't worry, there'll be another video for you very, very soon. Next time we are going to create our player character and give them movement and a camera so you can start exploring the world that you are building in this lesson. And our quote of the week is from my favourite early 20th century pacifist and mathematician Bertrand Russell and he once said, I love this quote so much, time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. Thanks very much guys and I'll see you in the next lesson.